Hello guys, we are at um, my house, obviously just chilling in the living room, just having uh, a catch up with the guys. Um, been a few days, haven't really caught up much on YouTube. Mostly just because uh, I was saying to the guys before, it's like, at the minute, I haven't really felt overly enthusiastic about putting stuff out because I watch YouTube every day and I, I love YouTube. But I do also feel like I'm getting a lot of suggestions coming up of things that are just the same. It's always the same. And um, I suppose right now in my life, I'm just trying to like <clears throat> come away from putting stuff out that's too the same for you guys because I don't want you to feel how I feel, which is just like you're living your life on repeat. So, you know, I could have, we could have gone and trained and filmed it and showed you lap pull downs and whatnot. And, um, you know, as good as that is, there's other people doing it. Um, and there's only so many ways I can tell you how to do something. And there's only so many ways they can tell you to do something. So I just thought, you know, we spent today talking about some things that I feel like are just a bit more important, really. Um, it's been a bit of a sad week in the bodybuilding world. Um, you know, I think it was only yesterday, actually, or the day before. Um, we lost uh, a fellow British bodybuilder, Neil Curry. I'm not going to go into details of why and how and whatnot. Um, but one thing I'm, I'm pretty sure of is that a lot of the times where we're seeing these things happen, where people are no longer here with us, that a lot of them felt a certain way. Um, you know, I'm I can refer back to you know Luke from years ago and other friends and people I've known who are no longer with us, and it's. It's very apparent to me, at least, that the one thing that's very similar through all these kind of um, occurrences is that how people are feeling. And um, I think young males, especially right now, like women as well, I'm not a woman, so I can't really talk on it, but young males right now are very, very under pressure um, in all aspects of life. And I don't think this is just bodybuilding. Uh, bodybuilding is just the you know the field that I'm in and I'm exposed to and I can see. Um, but when I talk about the things that I feel are an issue in bodybuilding, I can totally understand how they refer to and relate. Sorry to other endeavors as well. So you know, pressure to be, pressure to have, pressure to show, pressure to you know just basically always be present and try to be relevant is something that's very apparent whether you're a bodybuilder or a business person or even more so harshly on people that are just trying to live a very normal life because they feel pressured that living a normal existence is considered not enough. So therefore they have to then, you know, almost break away from the things that are really important to themselves, which is just trying to live and make an honest, you know, an honest buck and pay the bills and live and enjoy their relationship with their partner or whatever, to then try to please people they don't even know. You know, everyone that's out there watching them and exposed to, I don't know, their channels or their their pages and whatnot. Um, it's been a it's been a week where I've just really like questioned social media. Um, and as always, when we have this conversation about social media, yeah, there's there is a lot of positives. There is, um, but I can't keep I can't keep looking at those positives and letting them over kind of. Um, overpower these negatives that are actually so bad that they're at a point where people are no longer with us. You know, I, I don't want to ignore them anymore. I don't want to ignore um, how bad things have been for people. Um, and, you know, this message, this, this kind of video, like, it's probably not going to reach or touch many people. And some people will just listen and be like, ah, don't really care because you're not affected by it. And some people don't actually feel any of these things I'm talking about. Um, and if you don't feel any of these things I'm talking about, then I'm happy for you because it means you haven't become a victim of what I am talking about, which is um, pressure and the feeling of not being enough and, um, you know, just feeling like you don't have purpose or whatever in the world and that the only way for you to ever feel good about yourself is if someone else puts a like under your picture, messages you on the picture, say you're doing well. Um, that you can't go to bed at night without being told that you're great because your own feelings about yourself aren't enough to allow you to go to bed at night and be content. Um, you know, and I, and I speak of this because I, I find myself in a position that is basically this. Um, I've had a few weeks where things have been a little bit of a struggle on my end as well, you know, questioning my relevancy, my purpose, 
Uh, Ian retired from bodybuilding the other day, Ian Valier, and I watched his video and, you know, it, a lot of the words he said, they really resonated with me. A lot of it made such sense. It was like someone had just basically peered into my mind and started extracting the words and putting them onto, you know, onto a video and just speaking it out to the world. Uh, and I'm really happy for him. Uh, and I think someone like that that's made that decision will mentally and mentally be way healthier now. I can only imagine if he kept going, what he would have done. I think it would have led him to a point where he would end up like, not like some of these people. I'm not saying he wouldn't be with us, but certainly feeling even more of those pressures because I know he was already feeling them already. Um, I, I put up a post on my Instagram the other day and it was just like a reflection of how I was feeling. And it was just saying about, you know, bodybuilding, again, just referring back to that, bodybuilding of old was healthy mentally because you only compared yourself once or twice a year at a contest, which is great. You know, when you when you you have all this time in between to spend on the endeavor, on the pursuit and enjoy it, be in the moment and present for what's going to actually cause the change, you can enjoy it. And then I said the difference between that and now is that now that social media makes it that every day feels like you're in a competition. And I feel so sorry for so many people that are waking up every day and feeling like they have to compete on a daily basis. You know, you have to, if you don't post, you feel like you're out of the loop. If you do post, you're scared of what you're going to become subject to, whether it's going to be positive or negative comments. And then even so, if you do get a lot of positive comments, they build you up so much that when you do receive the one negative one or something negative happens in your life, the fall is tremendous. Um, I feel like it's just a really dangerous place to put yourself by relying on daily responses from people that mean nothing to you in order to dictate how you feel about yourself and your own life. Um, I hope that kind of that kind of makes it sense. It does make sense, yeah. I mean, yeah. I it's a little bit different for me. Obviously, I try and I try not to. I can understand what that is mm. and I've it may be in the past been in like similar situation but now with with regard to the social media I try not to pay too much attention to what other people are doing mm. obviously that now that I'm not a, a, a current bodybuilder my feed probably looks a little bit different mm. to yours so I'm not constantly seeing what other people look like yeah and I try and if I do see someone that let's say four or five years ago, I was beat, beating them or achieving more in bodybuilding than them. And now they're, they've turned pro and they're doing this and doing that. And I just try and feel like happy emotion towards them. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I try not to, um, uh, how can I explain it? So like every now and then, and I know, I know a lot of people do it, but what I try and not do now is I, I try not to post like, old pictures of me mm, living in that past because like every now and then like I, I know exactly the feeling where it is and it, it makes me want to take a picture from 2017 uh looking jacked and shredded and post it up and then just to i don't even know why just like you feel like you need some sort of like validation, yeah, validation. for what you've accomplished before and yeah. you want like not want but like you you know it's going to get likes and blah yeah. blah blah but then before I, I do that, I try and think to myself, like, why why am I doing that? Mm. And like, why do I need that? Mm. And then I think to myself, do I need do that? I need it. And then the answer is, and then the answer is no. Yeah. So, so then I don't post. If you notice on my feed, there, there's no pictures of me that are not current. I don't post anything that's not I like, think that's like now. That it's just trying to identify. Um... Or, or if you are doing it, as long as you realize why you're doing it, then that, then it's, if it's okay. for If it's for memory's sake. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. Or if that does drive you and, and makes you feel positive and blah, 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 then, then that's totally okay as well. Yeah, it's but, you know, I think it's just a case of um, realizing and being in control of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think maybe what it is as well, like, control is a really important word here um, because Again, you kind of just mentioned there, you control what you're exposed to because you choose to only follow the things you wish to follow, which yeah. you kind of, the things you're choosing to follow, you know, don't give you a negative vibe. They don't make exactly, you feel a certain yeah. way. They're actually very positive. They might make you laugh. 
I don't know, they might make you cry, but they're not they're not making you uh, resent or feel um, inadequate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, we, we're all responsible and I know I'm responsible. There's probably a lot of stuff I follow that I shouldn't. Um, because if I'm following things that are making me feel like I'm not good enough, then that's down to me. You know, I'm following pages that are making me feel, um, you know, an inadequ inadequacy. I could always just press the off button. Um, it, it's just, it's a shame because it's so quick and so fast in how it grows, you know, like how it spreads. You know, you look at like, you can look at what you were exposed to a year ago. And I'm noticing now, like, I'm getting suggested posts on so many negative things that I am actually not looking up. Yeah. I don't know if you notice that now. Like, I'm getting things come up on Instagram now that are pretty horrific. And it's not even me choosing to see them. Um, and and even if you're not following it and it's a suggested post, you've seen it. Once you've seen it, you've seen it. Yeah. Uh, but so, then, And then it will suggest more. Yeah. And, I, and, I'm, and they'll keep coming up more. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm noticing a lot of that's happening lately. And... Um, I know, like, again, this, this conversation, I know it's, it, I'm talking about mental health and, I, and, I, and I'm really pointing the finger hard at social media. And there's going to be a lot of people out there that are very pro social media and say, like, well, it's your fault. You choose to watch this. You choose to do that. You put yourself out there. And yes, I 100% accept that. I 100% accept that I've put myself out there. And I did put myself out there to try and create a life. I put myself out there to try and create a living, to try and create a purpose, to try and have a rapport with people. Um, to be accessible, like all of those things. I did, and I did. And, um, but with that, you know, over time, I suppose it's just become overbearing. It's become very... Um, because it has evolved. Like when we first- It evolves beyond what you expected it to evolve. When we first got Instagram, you could only post pictures. Yes. Yeah. And then you could post- Suddenly there's a new feature. Now you could post a video, 10 second video or yeah. something it was. Now you got minute long reels, bloody. Yeah, yeah. And, and and there wasn't any of this, there wasn't no advertising. No. There wasn't no sponsor. There was who you followed, you saw their stuff. Yeah. Now I've got best mates on there and I don't even see their pictures. Yeah, because it's putting other yeah, stuff I'm seeing face. adverts on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. And um I said this I had a conversation with Lee Priest the other day. I was like, Do you think it's forced on like do you think it's purposeful like all this? Like the way that people are feeling so negative, like and I, when I say that like it could be social media, it could be television, radio. Um, advertisements like are the majority of things that are being like kind of projected at us to make us feel kind of shit so that we do things like spend money do things like buy things do things yeah. like invest in things that we think will give us some sort of gratification immediately you know buy a holiday uh, buy the latest electronic good buy this game buy that game um, upgrade your life get this um, health product blah 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 and um yeah, we were kind of having that conversation and trying to work out whether that's you know true or not. And I, I do feel to some degree, yeah, I feel like um, something out of our control is determining that we see things that are quite negative. And the only way really that we can stay free of that shit, honestly, is like just pay less time and attention to it. Yeah, yeah. Like just, we just now go on it there. limit that shit. Yeah. Someone I know from the gym is reading a book at the minute. I can't remember the name of it, so sorry that I can't suggest. There's something about putting down your smartphone and um, basically just like understanding how much better you feel by you know being present and not looking at your phone all day. And over the last week or so, I've really, when I found myself scrolling, I've said to myself, shit, put it down. Yeah. Like every time. Because I'm finding, you know, YouTube even now, like shorts. When did shorts come about? Like they weren't around that long, were they? Yeah, yeah. It's and then I'm finding now like I'm scrolling shorts and I haven't slept. Before this week, I was going to bed and I was laying in bed from like, you know, 1 a.m. Then it hit 2 a.m. Then it hit 3 a.m. And it's just me scrolling on my phone, looking at shorts, trying to get the next fix of something that makes me feel something. Yeah. Like whether it's like a, a cat doing something that makes me laugh or an emotional video about someone with depression and me trying to resonate with them. Or like all these weird different like, emotions. It could be positive, sad, happy, whatever. All compiled into seconds of my day. Because you're over never and over again. you're going to scroll on the next one either. No, and I, and I don't know what it does to a person when you're ciphering through such a range of emotions in such time and laying in bed. And you know it's like when you lay in bed, guys, like three in the morning is when you've got your most crazy thoughts. It's when you feel like most vulnerable to um, uh, persuasion. Yeah. Like anything you think, if, if, you're, if you're exposed to something in those really late hours when you're kind of half asleep, half not, they feel really significant. Uh, and I and I found myself just 
we're looking at these things that were taking an effect on me. Like I say, men crying about how they feel like they're, they're, they're waking up in the morning, they no longer want to live. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is my phone putting that shit at me? Yeah. You know, like, so I don't know whether this is a, a feeling, you know, like I said, I've been feeling pretty shit. I don't know if it's a feeling starting from here or, or if it's starting from here term, and, yeah. and this shit's getting put on us. So I suppose I, I'm just, just putting a video out there where I'm just warning people that we're really, we're, I believe we're being kind of not hypnotized, but there's a lot of impression. So just, just be, be wise with how you spend your time and where you get your impressions from. Yeah. The one thing you can never really go wrong with is this impression. Being in a room with people you know personally yeah. and talking. And I don't do enough of it. And I've been a really bad friend over the last few weeks. I haven't made myself available for people because I found myself in a rut where I'd, was waking up in the morning and I didn't even know whether I want to leave the house or not. Um, you know, I found like I was moving in slow motion, no appetite, um, no ambition, you know, you name it, just feeling like absolutely, almost like I, 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 I listened to this video and it sounds sad, but it's like this guy was like, it's not like I want to die. He said, it's not like I don't want to be here, but he said, if God, God put his hand out and offered me a place right now, I'd say yes. Yeah. And I was feeling like that. I was like, because I don't ever want to be someone that, gives in to suicide or anything like that. I've always said that. I never want to be that way. I think I think there's always an answer. I believe there's always an answer. But I'm also not gonna lie and say that if 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 I was promised some sort of bliss of somewhere that's happy where you don't feel tired, exhausted and unambitious and it and the ticket was there, that I wouldn't take it. That's that'd be a lie. Yeah. Like at the time that's how I was feeling. Um we went to the cinema last night and just watched the film and it was just like a relief. Just it's just so nice getting to the cinema and just it, you don't know you need it till you do it. Like just sitting there and just watching a film and just being like, you know what? I needed that. Um, so I suppose again, if there's anything I can say is that it may be an effort to get out of your house. It may be an effort to kind of see your friends, but yeah. when you do it, when you do it, like it often is the answer. I think that's missing a lot in our society now. It's obviously coming back a bit, but I think being around other human beings is, is something that's because this shit, man. It's, yeah. I can't stand. I can't stand nothing more than WhatsApp mm. right now. Like I'm, I said to myself yesterday, I'm like, I should say to my friends, I no longer want anyone to message me. I want them to call me if they want to talk. Mm. Because we're losing a skill where we just have the ability to just converse. Yeah, it's true. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm like, and I can't read. I don't know what my mate's emotions are in these texts. I don't know what people are feeling because I can't convey how people feel oh, through a works. fucking, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I know the answer. The answer is just like, just call each other. Yeah. And then there's this weird, again, this comes with like how society is now, that everything just has to be digital. Like it's almost like using your voice is illegal because it's not digital. You just need to like fight back a bit. And it's, it's funny, isn't it? I'm doing a video for YouTube explaining this. So, you yeah, know, I'm doing something digital, but the guy's like, so the only way I can really get this, this kind of message out yeah. is like in a mass to the people I actually feel that I have a rapport with because obviously you guys obviously see some value because you support the channel. I thought it hurts. Uh, I thought it was monthly. Might be something under those floorboards in the house. Yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, right now, like I said, with YouTube, I'd rather just hit you up when I've got something important to say. There is good things going on in your life. You know, the gym's being developed as we speak. I've ordered loads of nice bits of equipment and stuff. And, 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 oh, it's a mouse. What? Oh, shit. That's what it is, it's a mouse. Oh, my days. Right. Sorry about that. We just had an episode with a little mouse. And, um, yeah, so the, the gym's opening stuff, and I'm really hoping that with that, that it's a way of giving back and feeling better. Um, you know, the plan with the gym really is just to, as much as it's for me to have somewhere to go and train, the main thing really is just to give some people somewhere to go and be physical and escape from maybe some of these feelings, you know, go and train and just have fun. Um, meet other people that are like-minded. I met my girlfriend in the gym, you know what I mean? Um, these guys met each other in the gym. So, you know, I, I feel that a gym is a, just a great thing. You know, if I can if I can contribute to people's lives by giving them somewhere to go and, and, and enjoy themselves, then that'll be great. And I think I'm 34 now and I feel like the most important thing is, is, is giving. Yeah, you know, it, like, is, it is nice. If you can, why not? It's, it's rewarding, isn't it? Yeah, man. Like, I've done, I've had a lot. 
I got my trophies from the gym the other day. I collected them. Well, Yannick collected them for me because I wanted them to take to the new gym. And, um, you know, the majority of my life was just spent about myself. It was just like, lock yourself in a room and just work hard towards a goal. And I, do, and I do like that. I like that I had ambition and stuff. It's a very solitary life and you live that for a long time and you, you kind of, you have your training partners here and there, but you never truly give back because the ultimate goal and the ultimate focus is obviously what you're trying to achieve. achieve yeah. um, and, I, and I've just found myself at a point now where that isn't satisfactory. You know, like I still compete and I don't know how long I'll compete for because it's kind of like Ian said, he's there again. <laughs> Let me get him off. Oh, that was he rapid, just went. Bro. Bro, I that literally. Was, that was fucking. Bro, he rapid. literally just did the instant transmission. From like, he was like front ways. And then it went and back. Then he's like, bro. It poofed. He yeah. went backwards. If, if smoke could have appeared there, it would have. Didn't it? That was mad. <laughs> I can't believe we're still doing his mouse. <laughs> Sorry, the mouse came back again. So I don't care if this is in there or not, but we've, we've got his cute little mouse that's just appeared twice. Yana could be mortified. She'd probably be scared. Yeah, she's. Um, so. Yeah, like with competing, I don't know how much longer it can sustain me. It can't sustain me on its own. Uh, uh, and with competing, the only way I get any joy out of it is when other people say it gave them joy. Like when people say, oh, I, like, I don't know. It's like when I did the Arnold UK, I had a lot of positive feedback from that. And people were like, it was so good to see you. And that is the, oh, it's like the only reason I still go. Do you think that's because it was on home soil? Yeah, I think I have like a, I think you connect with people. I think that, there's, they, 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 there's a bit more of a message behind people that are from here trying to do, yeah. who, who try and you know do what you do or what the same what you do. You kind of got this rapport, haven't you? That like, so we're from more, the same. It's more meaningful. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's meaning more meaningful for me, but it certainly felt like it was more meaningful for them. And obviously, the Arnold UK is back um, in March and. Uh, one thing I will say, like whether I, I don't know, that's the, that show will be a show I do before my time's done. Um, would it be my last show? Who knows? It could be because yeah. honestly, like most days I have conversations with myself or with others. It points towards something has to change because there is an unhappiness and there is a, there is a sense of forcing, yeah. forcing something that isn't, you can't continue to force. I, I, when I remember when I was younger and I was like a really avid skater, I remember getting to an age where I was like, it's becoming a real like effort to do this because it doesn't satisfy me like in a, in a term of happiness. Yeah. And, and, and bodybuilding, I get the odd workout that feels incredible when I, you know, like how I look and I flex and I'm like, man, I see potential, but that might be 10% of eight, the, the, the 100%. Yeah. And that is is ten percent enough for you to wake up most days and not really be happy with your routine and not really enjoy your time. And and, and the, the, the the fear the thing that keeps you doing it is the fear of not knowing how you would spend your time. The fear of not knowing what you do enjoy. And I, I know I enjoy some things, like I love gaming, but at the same time I don't want to sit down on a PC all day and be a and be a fucking couch potato. Yeah. So I, I, part of why I still train as well is just own it to myself from a, like um, respecting my body. Um, but then maybe, you know, if it got to the point where I'm done with bodybuilding, then you would just change your training to suit something that still gives you that sense of reward. But maybe that is also more enjoyable. I don't know. A lot of people are going through this like transition. Yeah, it is, um, it is strange. You've obviously been, you've, you're, you know, you found yourself balls deep in tennis now, which is yeah. giving you a lot of joy, a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, it's just stimulating brain cells that I wasn't stimulating when I was in the gym. It's, it's funny, isn't weird. it? Because there was a time where it was stimulating brain cells in the gym. Yeah. And then what happens is you just get to a point where it's automatic, it doesn't no more. Yeah. That's when it becomes, that's when you find yourself questioning it. Because you, like, you go through the motions. Yeah, you're not like super, I'm not super excited to go to the gym. No. But I, I want to go and play tennis. Yeah. Like, and that's what it is. It's like, it's just trying to do things that, I think, obviously I'm not saying you yeah. to bloody retire. No, 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 but it's conversation, show, but yeah. Eventually when you do step away from bodybuilding, you just need to experience things and find out what you like. 
Like you might like playing golf. Yeah, no, I might love it. Probably like you don't know, just bowling around the golf course, There's chill. Smash 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 balls, you know what I'm saying? But or it could be anything. It may may not even be like sports related. Could not be. Yeah, it could not be. It could be just could be something totally different. Yeah. Um, you just gotta eventually, obviously, just start experiencing new things and just find what stimulates. I, I always like this this question. I like to propose to you guys who watch and and yourself and you know. Ima well, imagine if you imagine if a human, if a person, woke up every day, and within reason, as long as it wasn't hurting nobody, did exactly what they wanted to do with their life. Because all of us wake up and know what we want to do and feel pressure that we can't. You know, like, you know, when we have that immediate thought in the morning, like, you know what, I should just drive to the ocean and have a walk on the beach. Like, but then you're like, no, because practicality, I can't because I've got to do this or that. Yeah. Imagine if you were the person who did listen to that voice. Like, what would your life be like and how good would it be? Would it have implications or would it be the best experience of the human life you could have? Like, imagine, like, you, you know, you wake up today and you're like, I've got a car. There's, you know, I can, I can go to this nice, like I say, this nice, I don't know, coffee shop I've never been to. So fuck it, I'm gonna go. Just, just shit like that. Yeah. It's, but then it's the reality it's of- so, It's the reality, isn't it? It's well, the financial, it's the, work. It's the blah, yeah. blah, blah. It is. And it, it, it's, 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 it's the freedom. Point. It's, it's <sighs> having that freedom that not, not and, many people have. No, that. and, it's, and it's, it's silly to expect that of anyone, isn't it? And I know it's a weird question I've proposed and it's probably offensive to some people because some people spend their entire life like really, really working hard just to keep a fucking roof over their head. So I am sorry that if it sounds like like a princess kind of fucking. But quote. I imagine there are people that are like that. Yeah, and I know just even for the people that are maybe having a harder time, if they were just able to do a little bit more of what you know felt right for them, would they feel better? Yeah, and that's where you know. I suppose you know, like we said, just open in a gym, for example. Those people that are, I know a few people that have a really tough life, their parents, and they don't have much free time, but they do manage to get to the gym. That gym is kind of their sanctuary. Yeah. You know, for those people that do feel like they're on a, uh, you know, on the, the wheel, the gym is the one part that takes them away from that wheel for a little bit of time in the day or whatever it may be. So yeah. I suppose that's a way of getting some sort of satisfaction by, you know, giving back. But I don't know, I've, lived, I've lived a very weird existence and like, because I, I don't know much other than um, the way that I've earned my living through bodybuilding. Yeah. I've always had a lot of time, which is a luxury, and I know that. Uh, and and. But I think I think <clears throat> at the same time, having so much time can be a burden. It, it because can. I, I don't have time to process some thoughts sometimes like this. I don't have time to get too deep yeah. into my own thoughts because. Yeah. My mind is preoccupied okay. with all this other crap. Yeah. And, and that's where I think a lot of this stems from for me is that I've spent, I've been very fortunate that even before I turned pro, I managed to secure a contract that kind of allowed me to have quite a lot of spare time and just focus on bodybuilding. Yeah. And it's been that way for years. And I have probably spent, yeah, too much time thinking. Yeah. Um, and thinking is procrastination, it's crazy. Like they say, you know, a thought becomes a thing or a thought allows you to do anything, but they can also be detrimental when you just overly sick. Yeah, with especially your thoughts. If, you, if you start having negative thoughts and yeah. stuff like that. I know there's people out there that that I envy that are just like positive all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, you bump into people sometimes and they're so positive yeah. all the time. Yeah. Makes you wonder how they're like when, when they're, they're when yeah. they're alone. Hopefully they're good. I, I hope that people like that are genuinely that. Yeah, um, you'd like to think so. Yeah, because I think this. I think it's possible to achieve that. Yeah, to a degree. Um, but the re re realistic thing is that most people are probably more yeah. negative than positive. Yeah. So imagine you're you're spending a lot, lot, lot of time on your own, and you're having a lot of negative thoughts. And you're you're not like you're not always around many people no, either no, no. because you live quite a solitary life. No, yeah, the, tra the training is weird because like you know I kind of wake up and if I th if a meal doesn't digest on time then I don't want to fuck other people's times up. I'm like, well, I can't train at a specific time because it doesn't digest it. So yeah, blah blah blah. So yeah, you do spend a lot of time on your own and you do process a lot of thought on your own. And I, I felt and I and I became more attuned to thinking after my mum died because you start to question um, things just on a much more depth for your level. 
yeah. because you start to explore thoughts that you never had before. Like morality and stuff was something that, you know, you didn't even really consider before you see someone pass. Yeah. So that's a whole world of thoughts in their own that come, you know, morality opens up a door of thoughts about not just the, the morality itself of when will my time be done, but then also the question of, am I going to do enough with the time I got? Am I doing enough with the time I got? Like, am I get like th th everything below that? Yeah. Okay, starts okay. to become very apparent. that wasn't apparent before, because before it was just existed. Before it was just wake up in the morning, I do my cardio, eat my things, I'm working towards a goal, bang. And that was it. There was no, there was no um, thoughts on any of these things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's the human experience. And I, and, I, and I suppose this channel today, like this video, at the end of the day, I'm just documenting, I suppose for my sake and for hopefully for the sake of some others, it's just the human experience. Like I'm going, as I'm going through things, I'm just saying them. And, you know, hopefully this is helpful for some others. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not judgmental at all. Like you could watch this and be like, I'm really not into this kind of conversation. And that's totally fine. Uh, and I don't expect, I don't expect everyone to be so, but I do, just want to put stuff out there, speak like this, just be honest and, um, you know, just be real. And uh, when I feel like something is uh, valuable enough to put out here on the channel, then I'll, I'll fire up and there will be some cool things. So I don't think there's really anything else to add. I could waffle on all day, but I do appreciate people if they did get this far in the video listening. Um, thank you to obviously Louis for his input as well. And. Um, Obviously, if anyone has any issues and they want to comment below, and yeah, like because I, I imagine people are having similar thoughts to they're not, it's not a judgmental place. And yeah. you know what? If a troll comes there and says some shit in the comments, they can go fuck themselves anyway. Who gives a fuck? They're probably living in denial, so <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, so it's um, I don't know, just stick by each other. So, hello to your friends. We're gonna find this mouse because we can hear him. Can hear him. He's yeah. definitely scrolling around, and um, yeah, thanks for your time, guys. And we'll uh, we'll catch up, we'll do some other stuff. There will be training and stuff for sure. But um, right now, I'm just processing the days as they come. So thanks for your time, guys.